currently a production supervisor. I manage well, between two of us about 50 individuals throughout the day. Uh, we coordinate where they go, what they do, what needs to be done, who has experience or knowledge to do particular tasks that they have. I started my career at Ventura Foods 15 years ago. I started in distribution for about six of those years before I was moved over to the production side, which is way more involved and it was just a stepping stone that allowed me to advance in that situation. Uh, distribution, obviously we have the forklift operators that are moving around quite a bit further distance, so trying to track them down sometimes is a little more difficult. Uh, depending on what areas you have them working on. Uh, dealing with the dispatchers, the drivers, and those individuals, you actually get to see almost the end users for the most part. Uh, certain customers, you do actually get to see the end users. For instance, Cisco, everybody's aware of, or Martin Brothers, Reinhardt, whatever. They're all aware of those individuals, and the same drivers that pick up from us, I've seen out in the field dropping off loads at other facilities, uh, restaurants or schools or whatnot. Uh, production, more intensive uh, because of the volume of people you have to organize, the schedulers you need to work with, the uh, quality assurance you have to work with, maintenance you have to work with. Need to coordinate all of these departments, even distribution work with, when we need product back or forth or whatnot. And it, it is a lot more involved on a daily basis with handling the individual employees along with all the other departments. I spent 13 years in a scrapyard and while I was working there, after two years, I got asked to move into the office area and take care of the office, paying customers and working with customers and dealing with the customers. So I would weigh pay during that opportunity, I learned to manage and coach individuals, and some of them actually said I was pretty good at it. I should consider pursuing a career and being a supervisor. And at that time, I had started taking a few classes the employer paid for, such as well, back in the day, Lotus, and then Excel and database and the such. After that. I got into the accounting side of it, the bookkeeping and worked with accountants and developed my skills in the accounting side of it. I decided over time that I was interested in the accounting side of a career. So I actually went to start a two year degree. I was amazed at how well I was doing. Uh, so I pursued the four year degree in a two plus two learning scenario where I'm at a community college going through Southwest State University, Marshall, Minnesota. And I was taking all of my extra classes for, you know, just the fillers mm -hmm. for the business, my electives, and then I'd get the majors in the accounting along the way. And just as my next two year cycle started for accounting, the professor had retired. So they dropped the accounting program, so I segued all of my electives into the major to get a Bachelor of Science in Business degree in administration. Working with the mix room, churn room, they're mixing the products. Need to work with them to get the products out to the line, the, the finished good out to the line so that we can package all of those. Need to make sure we have all the packaging organized. Uh, we do this with daily meetings. We will have meetings with schedulers and distribution maintenance and do it like a Skype or a Teams meeting uh, so that we can catch most of everything in the fishnet right there uh, and try not have anything fall through. After we get all our packaging and formulas situated, we work with the oil unloading, we work with QA and we need to do our checks on the lines, make sure our code dates, labels, everything is proper and in order. We go around and we work with formulas to make sure that they're proper consistency, whether we need to add more water, add more oil, or 
whatever might be needed so that everything is in spec. We monitor that closely. We also have our checks at the line every hour or so. We go through and watch all of our lines. Uh, we're running six lines on one side of the room and six on the other side on a given day. Uh, not every day, but you need to organize all these people and get them situated. And then there's meetings that we have throughout the day so that we can get everybody on the same page of what has happened yesterday. We'll discuss what we can do to improve what had happened yesterday. We'll take it out to the floor and we'll work with maintenance to see if we can dial anything in or prevent anything from in the future. And usually the day starts out trying to backfill everything. Then we can go into starting to figure out what tomorrow holds and what we need to fill in for the people to schedule the individuals for tomorrow's day. And during all that, we also have to take care of the timekeeping and manage what accounts that they're in, what locations they go to through the timekeeping application we have. Uh, fortunately for us right now, we do have a couple of clerks that assist us uh, taking care of that. We also have a program, JD Edwards, that we need to utilize for our work orders and batch sheets and batching systems. And we need to make sure that those code dates are all correct and all we have everything there printed for the individuals on the floor. And at the end of the day, we go through all the paperwork, sign off all the weight checks, QA checks, metal detector checks, and we just go through everything and verify with that. Like I said, I started in the distribution area. When I graduated, I was hired shortly after that graduation. I had already had the experience in other places for distribution. In a sense, I'd worked with the bill of ladings, I'd worked with the billing and all that goes with the distribution side of it. I've worked with the drivers and dispatchers. So it was a fairly easy transition for me into distribution. While I was in that area on second shift, they were struggling with supervisors on second shift for production side. They had uh, dropped down to one individual taking care of both maintenance and production. So with me in distribution on that side and having a clerk, if she had issues, she could contact me, uh, give me a call on a phone or a radio or whatnot, and I could go address that. But in that timeline, I was kind of, as I call it, tiptoeing over the border into production. And that one individual was showing me what I needed to know on that side. So a handful of the managers knew I was doing this and that just made it a easy transition to move over to the production side. Uh, a lot of it is self-motivation and desire to want to learn and grow with the company. Uh, future, as far as working here, I, like I said, I started in distribution. I moved into the shortening large side of Ventura and I saw that as a huge step. When they transitioned me from the large shortening side of the building over to the margarine side of the building, that was again another huge step. So it was like steps in each section because there's so much involved on the margarine side that so much can go wrong so fast, you know, uh, quantity wise. As far as opportunities in the future, there's so many of our facilities throughout the country and internationally that there are plenty of opportunities down in corporate, other facilities. Uh, they're advertising for supervisors, managers, and such. And eventually the opportunities will present themselves. And uh, I'd recommend high school, you can load up on speaking classes, uh, English classes and computer classes, uh, Excel. Microsoft, all those. A uh, lot of interpersonal communication is necessary for this position. You need to know how to speak with every different variety of personality. You have individuals that speak real softly and you need to speak real softly with them. 
you have individuals that will not hesitate to get in your face, so to speak. And in my case, I will just get right back in their face and treat them the way they're treating me. So you need, you need to know how to switch it on and off as far as who you're speaking with. And it, it's kind of like having multiple personalities, I would say, but you just need to know how to speak with individuals and what their concerns are. And a lot of times it's things that are going home, going, going wrong with them at home or something is going right with them at home and they like to talk with you and you get a feel for their personality that way. In my situation, I really don't know that much. I only know what my people know. So I lean on them a lot. If I'm asked to help resolve an issue, I'll just tell whoever's asking me, let me think about it a little bit, I'll get back to you. And first thing I do is go out to the individuals who live out on the front lines, uh, deeper than me and more involved. Uh, there, there's a lot of there's a lot of information that I need to gather throughout the day. Uh, for instance, we can just follow one oil as an M63, which turns into a 1099 formula, which turns into an 0879 formula, which goes into 11333 AMG finished good. Well, I need to know every step of what that oil is called. Now, if I go down to oil on loading, he's gonna call it M63. I go up to where they're making it, they're gonna call it 1099. It, it's, there's so much that I need to know, but they can dial it in tighter for me as to what's what. So having the knowledge underneath my guidance is really a benefit to me. I started out in high school working gas station. Uh, went to college, took some electronics. I didn't go so well for me started doing some roofing and just finding the interest of what you're good at, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, and pretty much the SWAT, strength, weakness, opportunities, threats. By learning your strengths, you can work on those, whether it be your mathematical or your English or whatnot, and work on your weaknesses to help build them up. But by far, you need to have a generalized education, if it were to be. Uh, I, I work side by side with numerous supervisors that work their way up from the trenches. Uh, hard work, dedication, uh, good attendance. Attendance is key to everything. Uh, if you put the time in, you'll get the reward. So in my situation, I went through college figuring that was the way to do it. but. I had had opportunities prior to be a lead man and lead individuals and work with people. And that's what I enjoy doing is working with people.